fatigue. It's one of the most common and often one of the worst and most disabling symptoms of MS, and many people with the disease report it as their very worst symptom. But there's a lot you can do about it, and I'll show you some potential treatments of MS fatigue and the results of several randomized controlled trials. But keep in mind that not every symptom is due only to multiple sclerosis itself. There could be other factors. It's reasonable if you have significant fatigue, in my opinion, to check some basic basic blood tests like a complete blood count, make sure you don't have anemia, thyroid stimulating hormone, hypothyroidism can cause fatigue, along with certain vitamins like B12, carnitine, folate, and perhaps other tests depending on your specific medical history and comorbidities, and please talk to your own provider for personal advice. Sleep can be an issue if you have nocturia, waking up at night to urinate five times, that can certainly cause fatigue and it's more practical to address that rather than fatigue itself. The same thing is true with neuropathic pain. If burning, tingling, stinging pain is keeping you up, it may help to address that first. And certain neuropathic pain medications like nortriptyline and amitriptyline are known to be sedating and may help with both pain and insomnia. Same thing with muscle spasms. If they keep you up at night and disturb sleep, that's a problem. Also keep in mind that caffeine in some people has a long long half-life for some people as much as five hours. So that coffee or tea at noon, even though it's mostly metabolized by the time you go to bed, may not make you alert, but may be enough to cause some insomnia. So try to limit caffeine to reasonable amounts in the morning. Also, medications can cause fatigue, such as antihistamines like Benadryl or anticholinergics like the bladder medicine oxybutynin, along with sedatives and hypnotics. And also, poly pharmacy, just taking a lot of medications in general, can sometimes cause vague side effects like fatigue, which may not be appreciated. So if possible, try to cut down on unnecessary prescription medications. Exercise can definitely help with fatigue. Some people with MS can't tolerate intense prolonged exercise. So just test your body, see what you're capable of. But that's definitely a nice treatment of fatigue. Also, our low exposure to light in modern society, being indoors all the time, may be making us more depressed and fatigued. In his book, Overcoming Multiple Sclerosis, Professor George Jelinek recommends sunlight exposure, and that can definitely help with energy and mood. If you have to work an office job, you're indoors all day, they also sell these small lights for seasonal affective disorder depression during the winter, and those can help as well, and they're relatively inexpensive. You position them close to to your eyes so you get a little bit more light exposure, giving you a boost of energy throughout the day. Let's now move to diet, nutrition, which has a profound impact on our energy level. This is a randomized controlled trial done at Oregon Health Sciences University. The principal investigator was Dr. Yadav, pictured here, and the diet was based on Dr. John McDougall, who advocates for a whole foods, plant-based, vegan, starch-based diet. So no animal products, no meat milk, cheese, and eggs, no processed food, with an emphasis on starchy vegetables like potatoes, rice, beans, lentils, etc. And they were hoping to show a reduction in relapses, but it was a small study over a short period of time, small sample size. They were unable to demonstrate that. There were some benefits in terms of weight loss and better cholesterol profiles, but the most impressive result was probably improved fatigue. So they measured fatigue with the fatigue severity score, FSS, on the y-axis here. And in red, you can see people who were randomized to the low-fat diet and in blue was the placebo group. And so those getting the diet by random chance actually had much worse fatigue at the beginning of the study, but by the end of the study, their fatigue was actually better than the placebo group, so a very impressive improvement in fatigue severity. Here is the WAVES trial, a randomized trial comparing two different diets. On the left pictured is Dr. Roy Swank, who believed in a low-saturated fat diet to treat multiple sclerosis. On the right is Dr. 
Terry Walls, who believes in a paleolithic diet where you avoid things like eggs, dairy, and gluten and eat a lot of whole fruits and vegetables along with animal products. She herself is a doctor who claims to have improved her own multiple sclerosis symptoms with this diet. And they also looked at fatigue, and here you're looking at reduction in fatigue severity score from baseline. So both diets showed reductions in fatigue. If you look at the right after 24 weeks, the Swank diet in gray had a little bit less reduction in fatigue compared to the Walls diet, though they both showed improvements. This is data from the Overcoming Multiple Sclerosis program by Professor George Jelinek, who believes in a whole foods, plant-based diet plus seafood. So kind of similar to John McDougall's diet, but seafood is allowed. And I'll add as a conflict of interest statement that I am the author of a chapter in one of George Jelinek's books, and I am working on an ongoing research project with his team at the University of Melbourne, though I am not being compensated for these activities. So this is an observational study not a randomized trial, and they looked at people who were following the OMS program, and they looked at severe fatigue. In other words, the probability of having a fatigue severity score greater than five, which is relatively high. And they compared people who stopped the program in red versus people who continued the program, and there was a lower probability of having F SS greater than five in people who continued with the diet. Now, of course, there are all kinds of confounders here where people may be more motivated if they're doing well, but it gives us a hint that those who stick with the diet seem to report less fatigue. There are supplements which have been recommended for MS fatigue, such as L-carnitine, vitamin B12 supplements, because B12 deficiency can certainly cause fatigue, coenzyme Q10, and NAC, N-acetylcysteine. The evidence isn't necessarily great for instance, this is a randomized trial for L-carnitine versus placebo. Only 59 participants, they looked at a different fatigue scale, the Modified Fatigue Impact Scale, MFIS, and there was no statistically significant difference. There was essentially the same fatigue with the treatment and placebo. There are several medications which have been used for MS fatigue. A more conservative option is amantadine, trade name Symmetril. Typical doses are 100 to 200 milligrams daily. This is not FDA approved for fatigue. It's been used to treat the flu. It's been used as a weak dopamine agonist for Parkinson's disease, but some people report it has some modest benefits for MS fatigue. The more effective agents are typically the stimulants, but stimulants can cause tolerance and dependence, particularly with chronic regular use. So that's sort of the downside to taking stimulants. They can also cause symptoms like elevating the heart rate, worse ticks and sometimes suppressing the appetite and causing weight loss, which isn't a good thing for people who already are quite lean. A modafinil or provigil is typically used at 100 to 400 milligrams daily. 400 milligrams would be a relatively high dose. Modafinil has a right-handed version of the molecule and a left-handed version. And in modafinil, there's a racemic or one-to-one -one mixture. And only the right enantiomer is actually active in the body. I won't get too technical with organic chemistry, but our modafinil or new vigil is the purified version where only the right enantiomer is present, and so 200 milligrams of Provigil would be equivalent to 100 milligrams of New Vigil. So just be aware of that dose conversion. Methylphenidate is effective. Ritalin is the short-acting version, and Concerta is the long-acting version. So with Ritalin, often a second dose is necessary, one dose in the morning and one dose at noon. Concerta may last the entire day, but it may not be as effective in the morning, and you kind of want these medications to wear off by the end of the day, otherwise they can cause insomnia. Adderall, amphetamine, dextroamphetamine, is sort of intermediate in half-life between Ritalin and Concerta. My opinion on these medicines is it's best to take them as little as possible to reduce tolerance, otherwise many people 
find the need to take more and more over time. Ideally, you would only take it as needed or at the very least take one to two drug holidays per week. Like maybe you need it for work to get through the day, but maybe you have a day on the weekend where you're not as active, you have time to take a nap, maybe you can skip at least one day a week. That would be ideal for the long run to preserve the efficacy of the medication, just my personal recommendation. Now the data for amantadine isn't great. This is a meta-analysis of nine randomized trial with a total of 601 participants, and there was actually no statistically significant difference in fatigue versus amantadine and placebo. And they looked at the standard mean difference, which is just the z-score or number of standard deviations, and there was minus 0.22 or 0.22 standard deviations less fatigue in those receiving amantadine, but it was not statistically significant p-value 0.37. For modafinil, the evidence is better. This is a meta-analysis of five randomized controlled trials with a total of 303 participants, but modafinil was only better on one of the two scales. For the modified fatigue impact scale, it was better, p-value 0.001, highly statistically significant, but there was only a weak and non-statistically significant trend for improvement on the fatigue severity scale, a p-value of 0.13, but anecdotally, it does seem to work at least a little bit for most people, and some people feel that it's life-changing and they're really able to get through the day and be productive, though there is the downside of causing a lot of tolerance and dependence over time, and sometimes other side effects. Now, another thing to consider is the treatment of depression. Depression is more common in people with MS than the general population, and low energy can be a symptom of depression. And there's certain antidepressants that are thought to be more activating and stimulating that may help with both fatigue and depression, and these medications could be a viable choice for someone facing such a scenario. The most famous of which is bupropion, trade name Wellbutrin, thought to be activating, but Venlafax Faxine, the serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor trade name Effexor has been used. Selegiline is a monoamine oxidase inhibitor. It potentially has a worse side effect profile. It's not usually used, but it is somewhat activating. And mirtazapine or Remeron, most commonly used in the elderly because it stimulates the appetite. It helps for people with weight loss. Also an activating antidepressant. These medications can boost energy. So to summarize, if you have MS and fatigue, first make sure there are no other factors like other medical conditions, anemia, or sleep apnea that need to be treated first. Make sure there's nothing disturbing your sleep like neuropathic pain or muscle spasms. Next, try to maximize any kind of lifestyle intervention. Make sure your diet is good. I don't necessarily think there's evidence for one highly specific diet. All of those diets share in common that they're low in processed foods, abundant in whole fruits and vegetables, and generally healthy diets, which would probably benefit your overall health and prevent other medical conditions. So they're relatively low risk. There may be vitamin supplements which could help, but the evidence is weak. And if you have severe, very refractory fatigue that's affecting your work, your life, your personal relationships, there are medications which could help. If you found anything that helps with your fatigue, please share in the comments below and let me know if you have ideas for other videos.